Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta and today we are going to discuss about mediation analysis in smart PLS. The name itself suggests that there is a presence of mediator in the model. Now if we see the theoretical model which is there, then Y2 is getting affected by Y1 directly. So the root P3 is a direct root. Now there is some effect which is coming on Y2 through the mediator also. It means that Y1 is taking the root of M and M is, uh, is influencing Y2. I'll give you a very simple layman example to understand this. A child wants to go to the picnic and he can convince his father directly, that is approaching the father directly. Now possibly this route may not work and he knows it that when I will approach or rather way if I convince the mother and mother will convince the father then he or she will be able to go on the picnic. So this is also the same thing is also applicable in the model that there is a direct effect which is coming up coming on the coming on dependent variable and there is a uh, effect coming through the mediator variable. Now depending upon the situations there can be a different types of mediation. The first mediation is that there is only the direct effect. The child can convince the father directly. Okay. So there is uh, mediation, no mediation is there. Whatever effect is there, direct effect is there. The second scenario can be that the direct effect is also significant and the indirect route is also significant. Now in this case, the total effect is the summation of the direct effect C dash plus A into B. When we will run smart PLS, I will, I will explain that what is A into B and how we can calculate that. No need to worry, Smart PLS calculates all this effect, uh, the, uh, the software will calculate each and every effect. Now there can be the third possibility that there is no direct effect, the entire effect is coming through mediation only, that is this one, this, this is a full mediation, this is a case of full mediation. Now Baron and Kenya, according to the studies conducted by him in 1980, he said, according to him, if the direct effect is significant, then only you should go for indirect effect. I again repeat, according to the Baron and Kenny, he what was his thinking is that if direct effect is significant, means this root is significant, then only go for indirect effect. But, but this approach was, uh, uh, you can say, criticized by Professor Hare, Professor Hayes and Professor Chin. Very recently, Professor Chin published a paper in 2010. According to him, even if the direct effect is insignificant, in that scenario also you should calculate the mediation or the mediating effect. Now depending upon the mediation, how many mediators are there, we can name this as a serial mediation or a parallel mediation. So what, uh, what different type of models can come into the existence? Let's see. A child wants to convince his father to want to forgo, for going on a picnic. Now it's not possible so he may take a different route. In the family he, approach, he, he tries to convince the mother that, that please I want to go to the picnic. Or child trans, uh, tries to convince his grandmother and grandmother convinces the father or the mother convinces the father. So all these routes can come into the existence. So this is a serial mediation. There can be a case of a parallel mediation. At a time child is taking the route from M1 to dependent variable or m2 to the dependent variable now when we are working on parallel mediation we always uh, we are we want to find out that which route is more significant more powerful in comparison to the another route mediation effect yeah this we have discussed now depending upon the different circumstances you can see in picture in picture uh, the same diagram first diagram i have tried to keep it here and on that basis this model is given or rather this flowchart is given in the book of uh, PLS algorithm written by the authors. First question is, is P1 and P2 significant? Yes. If they are significant, is P3 significant? Yes. Then this is a case of complementary that is partial mediation. If all of them are positive. Now there can be a possibility that all of them are not positive. Then that is a case of partial mediation. Again ask the question, is P1, P2 significant? Yes. Is P3 significant? No. It means that this is not significant. It is a full case of full mediation because direct, mediation, direct effect is not at all present. 
There can be another possibility. Is P1, P2 significant? No. Is P3 significant? Yes. It means that only direct effect is present. Indirect effect is completely absent. Now the last possibility, is P1, P2 significant? No. Is P3 significant? No. There is no effect, no mediation, right? Now, uh, the another effect was also observed by Chiang and Loy in 2008. According to this, there can be a possibility that the indirect effect is more than the total effect. Now that is known as a suppress, suppressor effect. This is a very rarest of rare case which can happen. But this effect was also seen. This we will see later on. Now let us directly go into the smart PLS. Now how we will introduce the effect of mediation in smart PLS. Let us try to understand. This is the model on which we are working. I will drag this job satisfaction here. And now I will connect this with this. Now what is the whole concept? Let us see. The organizational commitment of the person is affecting the staying intention. Fine. The direct effect is going. Now, there is a possibility that the organizational commitment is going on job satisfaction. That is, it is influencing the job satisfaction. The job satisfaction is uh, influencing the staying intention. So, I want to see that is the indirect effect present or not. So, for this purpose, what I'll do, I'll go and calculate bootstrapping. Make it 1000. The authors have suggested 5000. Make it 1000. Start the calculation. Fine. Results are ready for us. There will be four results which will appear. One, two, three, four. Right? Now the path coefficients which are generated, they are the direct effect. It will only give the result of direct effect. Fine. The total indirect effect is this one. Now what is the difference between total indirect effect and specific indirect effect? This, if you see, the numbers are same, both the numbers are same. The only difference which I will get is, in this case, specific indirect effect, I will get the entire path, organization commitment to job satisfaction to staying intention. So most of the time, what you will have to see, you will have to go in specific indirect effect only so that it displays the entire path of the uh, analysis, right? Now, how do I get this figure 0 0.012 that is an indirect effect? Let us see. This path coefficient, which is there. Now, I will click on demo. Right? The indirect effect, as we have already discussed, is the multiplication of 0.166 multiplied by 0 0.074. Let us do it. 0 0.116, 0 0.074. When I multiply this, I get 0 0.01228. This is exactly the same figure which I have got here. See, in specific indirect effect. This figure. Right? Now, is it significant? No. Because the p-value is more than 0 0.05, the effect is not significant. Let us try to confirm this thing by the confidence intervals bias corrected. Let us go here. And is the presence of 0 there? Yes, zero is present. It means very clear cut, clear cut that the effect, the mediation effect, job satisfaction is not a mediator, which uh, uh, means it, it, it is not a mediator. Now, in any case, just assume that this effect was significant. I'm just saying, um, I'm just giving you an example that if this effect was significant, then how would you have reported it? So there is a concept of variance accounted for that how much mediation is coming. And for this, the formula which is there is variance accounted formula is that variance accounted for is equal to indirect effect divided by total effect. Now let us see the, let us see for our case. The indirect effect is organizational commitment to job satisfaction to staying intention. The direct effect is organizational commitment to staying intention. What was, uh, what was the path coefficient or rather what was the effect of indirect effect? We have seen it is 0 0.012. Okay. 
Now let us see the direct effect. 0.272. This is direct effect of organizational commitment on staying intention. I can pick up this number from here also, and I can pick up from path coefficient also. It is more or more or less. It will give me the same thing. 0.272. Let me insert this thing in the formula. So what I get is 0.012 divided by 0.272, which is 0.04. which means that the effect is 4%. So according to the authors if it is 0 to 20% no mediation is present the p value is also suggesting that the mediation is not there 20 to 80% partial mediation is present above 80% full mediation so here it is only 4% at least at least it it, it should have 20% here uh, this is not to be used here we are having less than 20% and therefore the mediation is not present what other type of models we can go for right now why only organizational commitment can affect job satisfaction let us see that if i connect environmental perception coworkers is this effect significant or not again i will go and calculate bootstrapping and make it sure 1000 is on start the calculation till this runs how to report the statistics or how to report the results in the paper so remember this format the format is the relationship you will have to indicate the direct effect you will have to indicate indirect effect you will have to indicate and the total effect variance accounted for bias that is a bias confidence interval lower and higher this i have already explained from where you will get this figures you will get this figures from here confidence interval right the total effect is what the summation of direct effect plus specific indirect effect so for any case say for example if i say uh, an organizational commitment to staying intention it is 0.006 now take that direct effect from here organizational commitment to the staying intention this one 0.276 now take the addition of both of them you will get organizes commitment to staying intention see the figure which you get it is a summation of direct and indirect effect right now we are in we have to check for this model specific indirect effect can anybody interpret the result yes you are right the p value is more than 0.05 it is clear cut that the mediation of job satisfaction is not working right now let us see what other type of models i can introduce here so i will again go in demo and i'll say that why only job satisfaction can be the mediator it can happen that the coworker can also be the mediator okay let us introduce the effect of coworker as a mediator right so what i'll do i'll connect this to this then this to this so at a time environmental perception is directly affecting it is going through job satisfaction uh environmental perception is taking the route of job satisfaction and job satisfaction to staying intention and it is also taking the route of environmental perception to coworker to staying intention now what to do let's run the analysis again calculate bootstrapping and here parallel this is a parallel mediation so start the calculation now see always first you go to specific indirect effect and try to figure out which effects are significant now you will find that two two effects are very significant one is organizational commitment to coworker to staying intention and environmental perception to coworker to staying intention if you feel that you want to see it directly here use the real or relative value and you will come to know the depending upon the thickness of the path you will come to know which paths are more significant now there can be a possibility that at a time both the routes are significant right or one of the route is significant for example just listen carefully to me the first possibility is that this path is significant 
right environmental perception to job satisfaction job satisfaction to staying in tension this is significant this path is not significant no no it's not necessary for you to report this um, this mediation you will only report report the most powerful mediation the second possibility that this route is not significant job satisfaction is not significant as a mediation but this route is significant so in this case also only you will report co-worker you will not report job satisfaction now there can be a possibility that this route is also significant and this route is also significant so in such scenario what we will do we will calculate the difference of both the mediation and the mediation which is more powerful we will say that this mediating effect is there now if you see here in bootstrapping Organizational commitment to co-worker staying intense and p-value is more, less than 0.05. Environmental perception to co-worker through staying intense is less than 0.05. And we can very well say that the effect is significant. Let us go and see in the confidence bias corrected interval. And here we can see that there is a presence of zero. Or there is no presence of zero in both of them. And when the zero is not present, it means clear that the effects are significant. Now, which effect is more powerful? So for that, there is a table which I have made and you will have to calculate the difference of the two mediator. First of all, understand this table. The table is mediating effect one, that is uh, the coworker or the job satisfaction which we are considering. If both the p-values are less than uh, both the p-values are more than 0 0.05. No, no point in calculating difference of mediator. Right. Now, if one of them is significant, I already explained, and another is not uh, insignificant, then also no point in taking the difference of the mediator. Now, this is not significant and this is significant. Then also there is no point in calculating difference of mediator. The difference of mediator will only come into the picture when both of them are significant. In that scenario, what you will do, you will just take the specific indirect effect of mediator 1 minus specific indirect effect of mediator 2. If, if I get negative, it means that the second mediator is more powerful in comparison to the first mediator. This we can see in smart PLS also. Let us go there and see. This minus this. Which effect is more powerful or rather I can see from here this effect this minus this. So it is very clear uh, it is very clear that organizational commitment affecting co-worker and co-worker affecting staying intention this effect is more significant or rather it is more powerful in comparison to uh, this effect. And therefore this mediation is uh, you can say more significant in comparison to this. Now, there can be a parallel mediation also in the model. That situation can also arise. So, let us introduce the parallel mediation. Now, what I'll do, I'll connect this thing to this one. Now, see what will happen. Environmental perception going on co-workers, influencing the co-workers, co-workers influencing the job satisfaction, job satisfaction affecting the staying intention. Now in smart PLS, things have been made so simple to calculate all these effects. If you're working on other softwares, then you will have to remove the direct effect. Then you will have to calculate the indirect effect. But this has made the things so simple, right? No need to worry. Directly go in, calculate bootstrapping 1000, complete bootstrapping, start the calculation. And now you will where you very well know where to go. Yes, you are right. You will have to directly go in specific indirect effects. Let us directly go in specific indirect effect is the presence there. So when you go in specific indirect effect, it will give you the entire path. The p-value more than 0 0.05, needless to say, and it is in red, needless to say anything. It means that this path is not significant or rather the parallel mediation is not significant, right? So thank you all of you. You can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.